We are now recording. Uh, Julian has his hand raised. Uh, he's coming in, I think, now. Yeah. Should we start, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for coming. We're gonna officially start the meeting. Um, I am going to share my screen so everyone can see the agenda. Can everybody see? Yes. Great. All right. Um, so um, announcements and public comments. Um, I don't have anything for this. If anyone else has um, any announcements they'd like to make before we delve into the regular meeting, um, feel free to just speak up. Uh, we can also address anything that comes up at a later point in the meeting. Uh, next up, we have hearings. So uh, two potentials. We did schedule a site visit for the Amherst College Lyceum um, hearing last month, um, but that has been postponed. Um, and then there's another one coming up for a Big Y University Drive. Um, as of uh, the sending of this agenda, we didn't have any further news on those. They're just kind of potentials. Um, but Alan, uh, do you have anything you want to add or speak to for those that may be coming down uh, later this year? Oh, definitely. Um, so we do have uh, Amherst College. I spoke with them yesterday. They are interested in proceeding with the uh, tree hearing process for the two trees um, in front of the Amherst College light. Um, the Lyceum project, I believe it's called, um, on South Pleasant Street, uh, where they're renovating a building and going to put an addition on another one. There's a Nori Maple there and a Magnolia that they are requesting to remove um, and would like to um, plant four more trees in that location um, that, to replace those trees. Would those be public trees that they would just be planting for the town and then the town would take ownership or would they remain private? They would be public shade trees. They would be planting them and they would be uh, town trees. Um, and then the, um, the U Drive tree hearing um, request hasn't been submitted yet, but they are trying to get me a, a design plan for what they're proposing to do with re-landscaping um, on University Drive to remove um, a row of arborvitae there. Um, we would like to uh, improve the streetscape along there, essentially. Um, and then um, the town is redoing sidewalks and the contractors working on the McClellan Street sidewalk has said that the white pine trees that are growing on the grass out there, there. Um, you know, would not uh, really survive the construction. It was a, a new sidewalk that I wasn't aware of until um, earlier this month that the town was actually doing. Um, and there are four white pine trees that have, were planted a number of years ago uh, that are growing in the grass belt that have seriously lifted the sidewalk in places. and. Um, I would recommend they be removed before the town fix the sidewalk. So the town is going to have a hearing to remove those four white pine trees. Um, I'll be posting that 
um, hearing soon for May. And the Amherst College like their tree hearing for May as well. Should we schedule that now for the yeah. Amherst College? Yeah, we should schedule both of those. We could even look at the Arbor Vitae's if you want to at University Drive. Um, uh, so we should schedule those, definitely. Okay. Um, April is shaping up to be a pretty busy month. I know we've got Arbor Day coming up at the end of the month. Um, We often schedule the site visits to be close to our next meeting, but would doing it at the beginning of May be too late, Alan? It would not. You know, beginning of May would be fine. Um, okay, so our May meeting is the 10th. So we could do the Monday before. Monday night. Yeah, Monday, May 9th at 5 p.m. Does that work for everybody or, or many, many people? I, I can't make that day. Yeah, I don't think I can make that day either. Um, okay. Can we do it before our meeting on the 10th or 30 or something? So we could, we need, again, we'd need to um, make sure that you have a quorum and we, we just need to make sure too when we post this uh, tree hearing in the committee meeting that we coordinate the hearing component with the tree hearing um, properly so that it's yeah. very clear um, when the tree hearing starts, when the committee deliberates and then when the committee when the hearing starts back up again for the committee to uh, give the tree warden a recommendation so it'll take up a good portion of the beginning of the tree hearing. Hmm. just to clarify for my own peace of mind um would we so we would have to have a tree hearing which is as is part of the meeting we don't have to. Um, we used to do it in the in-person meetings because it made sense to get everyone in a room um, to hold the hearing just before the tree regular tree committee meeting. Um, so we'd open the tree hearing process and then the presentation would be given by the applicant and then the I would close the hearing, open the shade tree meeting, the meeting members would then deliberate regarding the request and then make a recommendation, vote on a recommendation of the tree warden and then close that and I'd open the hearing back up again. Um, okay. So if we were to do that and also have the site visit on Tuesday, that would be most of our May meeting. It could potentially take up a lot of the Whole meeting, yeah. yeah. Would everyone be available to meet the Tuesday before for the site visit instead? Could even be a regular time, Tuesday at 5.30 on May the 3rd, and then just do the tree hearing part of the process and our regular meeting on the 10th? That sounds good. Do that. All right. I'm gonna- Well, well wait, um, why don't we schedule the hearing for five o'clock on Tuesday the 10th? So Does do the site work? visit on the third, and then we'll meet a half an hour early, get the site, the hearing done before we start our actual meeting. So that we, sounds good to me if everybody can make it early on the 10th. Yep. I work till five, but I'll try and knock out a half hour early so I can get back. Um, which site is this for? Sorry. So it would be for um, Amherst College, South Pleasant Street, U Drive, and McClellan Street. Oh, for all three. Okay. We don't have to do U Drive. If it's crunch, they haven't put in an application yet. So 
I don't think it's going to happen in May. Um, that might be a June one. So if we're really busy, then we could just skip the U Drive one. And the only ones that are definitely on the agenda for a tree hearing will be South Pleasant Street and McClellan Street. And then we would visit both of those locations on the third. Yeah. Does that work, everyone? Yeah. OK. okay. Um, so Tuesday, May 3rd, we can keep it at 5.30, site visit, two-parter. And then next, the following week, Tuesday, May 10th, five o'clock tree hearing about the two locations and 5.30 regular meeting. And if stuff comes up or whatever, um, you can just let me know, that'll be fine. Um, and I'll send that out when I uh, send out with the agenda and meeting notes and everything. So everyone can double check it's on their calendars. Good. Um, Sarah. Uh, Ronnie has uh, their hand up, and you're new, so maybe um, you could introduce yourself to the committee. Um, so, are you talking to me, Ronnie? Yes. Okay. So, um, I actually wanted to make a public comment, and I, the chair called for announcements, but not public comments, and things have been so formal in other uh, committees that I did, I was waiting for the public comment call. Uh, so let me say first that I really appreciate you allowing people to show themselves so that one feels represented at a meeting and it's not some distant voice with a clock ticking. So I really appreciate that. I, I'm here mostly to uh, express my appreciation for the involvement of the Shade Tree Committee in the uh, question of the Silver Maple on. Uh, sunset and fearing. And I'm so happy that it is in fact going to be saved as you've all probably heard, um, but that the developer literally decided that he wouldn't take it down because of community interest and concern for that tree. So, you know, I think the engagement of all of us is just so important in helping with the trees and I'm very committed to the protection of trees. I came to this committee when I, I think when I first moved to Amherst a few months ago, because I'm very interested in tree protection, really taking good care of our existing trees so they live a long time. And at the time I had the impression that this committee was mostly focused on um, planting trees, which is important of course, but my concern is focused on protecting them. I spoke with Mr. Snow about this uh, earlier this week because of the silver maple in question and understand that you are possibly working on a tree ordinance or guidance. And I'm here just to say that I'm happy to volunteer time um, with that. Or if you're writing proposals to raise money, usually money is not the problem, but if it is, um, I really just want to, as a resident uh, who believes very strongly in community participation on issues of importance like this is to me, I just want to say that um, I would like to be engaged. I didn't know about, I didn't, wasn't planning to be on today's meeting until I spoke with uh, Alan Snow, so I cannot stay to the end, but I appreciate you letting me talk. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, it's good to have good news. It, it's good to hear that a tree is going to be saved, even if it's a dying old tree. Thanks, Ronnie. Great to hear from you. Um, we'd love to have your support for the committee. Um, and if you're interested in joining, uh, I think we, we still have a spot available. Um, so please consider joining the committee officially. Um, and we're certainly more than happy to have you in any sort of uh, informal capacity as well. Um, if you are interested in taking on some more responsibility and helping out with the tree ordinance, that's definitely something that can be uh, arranged. We would love your help with that. That was a project that I was um, working on, but I've been on maternity leave and I have just not had the capacity for moving that project forward at all. So if you're interested in taking that up, um, that'd be great. Um, and please uh, 
get in touch, um, send me an email and we can coordinate further on that. Um, I also, but I do think it was, um, not, I don't think everyone knew the result of the um, deliberation about the tree on, on um, sunset and fearing. So that is, uh, is news, I think, to, to many of us. Um, yes, it, it was an email from Barry Roberts to Dorothy Pam and to Jennifer Taub. Mm -hmm. So they emailed me when they heard from him. Sarah, can you tell us what it is? I don't think I'm aware of this update. I, I'm i not either. Oh. <laughs> um, I, was gonna, I wasn't on the email. <laughs> I was going to go into the details on the tree warden report. Um, but OK, we, we can save it for then um, and just check off a couple of these uh, housekeeping things before we get there. Um, um, one other thing, Sarah, uh, Victoria Cardin is here, and uh, maybe do you want to speak to the group at all? You're Victoria, do you want to, wanna... there you are, hi. Um, If you're able, you can just introduce yourself or if there's anything in particular that you're um, here at the meeting for um, or, or any, sorry, it's very loud at my house. <laughs> we can't hear you. Yeah, we're, she's not muted, so I don't know why we can't hear her. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so my name is Victoria. I joined um, at the beginning of the year, not, not this year, um, beginning of the semester last year. Um, I've been to a couple of meetings, I've been to a couple of tree plantings, and um, just trying to stay involved. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Great. Uh, if there's anything, I know you've kind of helped out with a couple of different things and been to plantings and stuff. If anything sparks your interest um, as we go through things today, um, we've got a lot going on for Arbor Day. So um, feel free to, to chime in um, at any point. Um, okay. Let's uh, move on to uh, minutes. We have March minutes to approve as well as the February minutes. Um, those were sent out with the agenda. Um, I hope everybody got a chance just to look through them uh, so we can approve those. Uh, I make a motion to approve February and March minutes. I second. Great. All right. Which reminds me, um, do we have someone taking minutes for this meeting? <laughs> Gordon, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll post the, uh, the February, March minutes to the town website. Great. Thank you, Henry. What I want to ask, uh, are the, the formats of the minutes I've been taking okay? I noticed Bennett's were in bullet form, which seemed nice and concise. And if there's a preference for that format, I'll, I'll adjust. Mm -hmm. I think the way you've been taking them is, is totally fine. I, okay. um, I didn't have time to do any more formatting on the minutes before I sent them out. I read for accuracy and like oh, yeah. spelling. Thanks for um, fixing them up, by the way, because they were a mess when I sent them to you. <laughs> no, they really weren't, but no problem. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I just didn't have time to do formatting. And I don't honestly have a problem with it. I think to each his own, as long as we're getting the majority, you know, the important information from um, each meeting so that we can go back to reference as necessary. I certainly need to read the minutes just to make sure I've remember everything that we've talked about um, and things that I have to do on my agenda for a prioritization. Um, but I don't think there's any right or wrong way to format whatever you're comfortable and happy with, I think is, is great. Um, uh, next we have volunteer hours. Henry, are you gonna mark those? Yes. So um, let's see, oh, Sarah? Seven. Okay, Ellen? 
Tex. Gordon. Let's say four. Okay, Bennett. Ten. Ten. Shoshana. Six. Julian. Seven. And I'm at about ten also. So. And um, um, I guess John Root was the only volunteer for the planting, so I'll put volunteers down for a couple hours, plus the people that are here today. So, all right. Good, thanks. Sarah had two people there. I did. <laughs> it's true. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. I'll add another hour for uh, Rain's contribution. <laughs> um, all right. Next up, we have the committee report. Um, for the chair report, I just uh, wanted to say thanks to everybody who came out to our tree planting, first uh, planting of the year, despite the rain. Uh, it was great that it cleared up and we had a little bit uh, nicer weather um, towards the end of the event. Um, it was also great, I think, that we were in a high visibility location downtown definitely a lot of people stopped and kind of asked and talked to us a little bit more than when we're, um, you know, on the side of a road with there's more traffic or a neighborhood where you don't get as much foot traffic. So that was really nice to be able to do a little bit more uh, public um, outreach while we were planting. I thought that was great. Um, I also attended the Uh, Tree USA webinar, the power of social media. So um, this is available if anybody wants to see like the slides or I think I can access a recording of the webinar also. Um, if you're interested, you can just let me know and I can try to get that to you. It was, um, had they had a couple different experts from Tree USA um, and the Arbor Day Foundation talking about how to use social media. A lot of it was very basic and geared towards, um, you know, different groups, towns that might not have a social media presence already. Um, and we already have an active um, Facebook group and uh, Instagram. Uh, and then there were just some um, ideas about how to broaden your user base, thinking about how many times to post, uh, different kinds of things to post, um, who your target audience is. So there's different social media that you can use to target if you have a younger audience or an older audience. Um, and a lot of kind of, you know, interesting tidbits. Uh, so I don't know if we're really at a point where we're ready to kind of push our, our social media presence. I think we've got a lot of other projects we're focusing on um, a bit more internally right now, um, but uh, definitely some good ideas for uh, increasing our, our outreach um, and expanding it through social media. So um, if anybody's interested, uh, I'm happy to talk a little bit more about that. Um, Shoshana and Julian, I was just thinking of you guys because I know you're running our, our Facebook and our Instagram. So if you want to chat um, anytime about this, uh, I'm happy to, to go through the slides or, or give you some more of the takeaways from it. But I think there's okay. a lot of, yeah, just let me know. I can do it. You know, I'm pretty flexible. So we can just uh, top on a Zoom or do a phone call or whatever um, works. And, and I, uh, uh, happily, I think you guys are already doing a lot of the stuff. It was geared towards kind of, you know, beginners for social media. And I think we're already, we're already at a good point. So there's some ideas for having a, a broader reach, uh, but I think we're off to a good start already. So that was uh, kind of nice to, to glean from this uh, webinar. Yeah, Sarah, I was on the um, call also, and I took a few notes that I'll pass on to um, Julian and Shoshana. But yeah, what you said pretty much sums it up. Great. Um, and then um, other than that, I'm mostly just been focusing on getting stuff ready for Arbor Day. Um, so we've got a lot coming up uh, this month um, and, and things to kind of get ready before our tabling on
the 30th. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much it for my report. Henry, do you have anything else that you wanted to add? Yeah, I have quite a few things. Um, one is that tomorrow at 1030, the town council or a group of the town council is going to go over the Arbor Day proclamation. And it might be good if one of us was there. Um, we can tell them what, what we're planning, you know, whatever we decide at this meeting. So I can't be there tomorrow at 1030, but if anyone can, uh, I guess we need a volunteer to do that. 1030 in the morning? Or 1030 at night? Did you say 1030? 1030 in the morning. It's not the whole um, town council. It's a subgroup. I could, let me see if I can find the email. Um, uh, that's not it. Hold on. Did you say that was in person or just online? Uh, no, there's a Zoom link. Okay, I can send it okay. to her. Michelle Miller, District 1 Councilor, sent this thing. She's, it's the Governance Organizational Legislation Committee, and they're going to review the proclamation for Arbor Day. So okay. tomorrow at 1030, yeah. Can anyone do that? I can probably be on then. Um... All right, I'll send you the link. Um, Ellen, you just raised your hand. Are you available then also or no? No, there was a fly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize. Sorry. You won the auction. <laughs> um, yeah, on April 21st, there's going to be an iTree information session. iTree is a program that you can use to sort of catalog the town's um, tree canopy and things like that and research information about trees. So that's at one o'clock on the 21st, which is uh, next Thursday. If anyone can go to that, I can send you the info about, about that. So send me an email if you want to do that. Um, I've been hearing from different people in the community. Uh, Van Kaner, who lives up on uh, Flat Hills or Market Hills Road, one of those, um, was upset. And I think he sent you, Alan, um, a photo of some damaged trees that the people that were brush hogging along the edge of the road did some damage and uh, he was quite concerned about that. He couldn't make it today, but he asked me to bring it up to the committee's attention. I did receive a, a C-click fix. He sent me a picture without any information. So I just had to guess where it was. <laughs> yeah, it's on uh, whatever the road that's going up the hill. Is that, that's Market Hill. Flat Hills, Flat Hills. Flat Hills, okay. Yeah, I always get the two mixed up. Um, so if you could respond to him, that would be great. I suggested yeah. you see click fix because he said he'd emailed you and Guilford and not heard. So, so um, anyway. I'm sorry, Henry, could you repeat who that was? Van Kaner, K-A-Y-N-O-R. And yeah. N O R, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And for those of you on the committee who don't know about C Click Fix, it's uh, a good way to get Alan's attention or the town's attention. Um, People request, have a complaint about something in town, a pothole in the road or whatever, they can fill out a form and whichever group in town they're required to review it and, and deal with it. So um, it's, a, it's a DPW, you know, work request system essentially. It's kind of like a hybrid social media slash work request. So other people can uh, agree that your uh, request is important and needs to be, you know, dealt with. It's worth looking at C click fix Amherst and you'll get there. Um, and then I heard from someone who lives at the end of Spalding street where the um, high voltage power lines are going overhead. And, you know, the power companies are just clearing massive amounts of trees everywhere on that. But these were, they weren't exactly street trees, but they, they took a lot of stuff down. And uh, the people who live in that condo complex at the end of Spalding street were very upset. So I met with them, suggested other things they could plant and where they could plant, and um, I didn't have much help for what was already taken down, though. We don't really have a say in that, I guess, Alan. Yeah, I mean, I did with I did meet with the group there. Um, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, um, and uh, tried to walk them through the whole legal process of right of ways and uh, you know. Um, what the utility companies have the right to do and what they permit to do and uh, 
some ways to work with the utility company to kind of revegetate the area um, so that the property, adjacent property owners can meet their kind of privacy shading screening goals and the utility company can meet their goals. Um, so it was constructive. Good. Yeah. Um, and other than that, um, I did hear from someone who uh, wanted to try to protect the Mary Maple and I talked to them about why it might have to go, but I think Bennett's letter, Bennett, that was a great letter. I think you did a good job on that. Um, so there was one, oh, Joe Comerford is going to do a, an Arbor Day thing also. So I will send her the information from today's meeting so she can get that out to people also. And that's all I have. Great. Thank you, Henry. Um, next, we have the tree warden report. All right. Um, again, thanks everybody for coming out um, Saturday and helping plan. I apologize. Um, the nursery didn't have our trailer ready on Friday, so we picked it up Saturday morning and we're running around trying to get the trees placed and um, get everything else ready for the planting. And it was a challenging, challenging day just because it was so spread out. So it was, you know, we keep running into this kind of leapfrogging approach where a group gets ahead and you can't get water there and mulch there and trying to clean up after so that the tools and things aren't left behind. And, Turns out we did leave a shovel and a wire basket and burlap in front of uh, Drew's restaurant and it managed to stay there until Saturday, uh, Sunday morning when my crew picked it up. <laughs> so uh, people were trustworthy. Um, but it, it was, it was a great planting. Um, it's great to be able to get those trees in um, and uh, have people see you out there planting trees. So it, it's nice and it, it's an amazing help for the town. So I, I truly appreciate it. Um, so I'll update you on the sunset tree hearing process. I did, I talked with the town manager and town manager and I and the two members of the town council who were also opposing the removal met in a Zoom meeting um, to go over the whole, you know, uh, what their concerns were, what my concerns were. Town manager is working on his uh, reply. Um, on the tree hearing. And then I also met with the applicant, wanted to meet again. Uh, town manager also asked me to come up with some options, um, you know, for preserving the trees. Um, I met with the DPW director and town engineer, and we discussed, you know, what could be done around the sewer line near the other tree. There isn't much we can do at all with that. Um, if it's, uh, it's an old clay line, tile line, um, it's, feeds, um, you know, part of the west side of Sunset Ave. Um, and there's the construction project in itself, just the vibration from the construction would probably cause that that line to fail and need to be dug up. So um, based on its age and condition, um, it needs to be fixed. Um, so that's a tree, unfortunately, really needs to go. Um, the other tree, when I spoke with uh, the applicant regarding the tree on the corner, the north corner fairing in Sunset, um, and we discussed, you know, how much work they would be willing to do to try to preserve the tree, um, and, like modifying their plans, uh, doing some extra root zone protection around the tree, um, the need to prune the tree uh, to uh, mitigate the risk of the new sort of paradigm over there with lots lots more activity, pedestrian traffic and things like that and, and structures. So um, after the meeting, um, the the applicant sent out a, the email regarding, you know, wanting to work around preserving the tree instead of cutting it down. So, um, you know, it's it's great that trees is being preserved and it's, it's amazing that the applicant wants to take that those kind of steps to preserve. It's not going to be cheap. It's not gonna be easy. He's gonna modify his, his program. Unfortunately, in my opinion, we're not, you know, saving the tree. We're just not cutting it down. Um, and it's just a harsh reality of, uh, you know, trying to preserve a tree in that kind of environment. But, um, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I can hope I'm wrong. And the tree, you know, 
survives and grows another 20, 30 years in that location, that would be amazing. Um, so that, that is ultimately what I hope will happen here. Um, the, um, let's see. Yeah, so the, the re everything else I have really is just, you know, working around every day and second Saturday tree plantings for the rest of the month, the rest of the uh, season. So um, I can wait until later uh, to do that on the committee meeting. Uh, I see uh, Ronnie has a hand up. You can go ahead, Ronnie. Um, yeah, I guess what's troubling me is this thing that, you know, it's the construction that's making the trees vulnerable. And I know the trees were there before the sidewalks and before the uh, roads and whatnot. And I myself earlier have complained about the horrible sidewalks because I've fallen twice on the sidewalks right in front of my house. Um, but I'm wondering, do we really need so much sidewalk? Like, you know, either a sidewalk makes it easy for people who cannot maneuver the terrain because they're in um, a wheelchair or something, or in which case this kind of sidewalk, a sidewalk next to an old a tree doesn't help because it's going to get bigger and get will grow into the sidewalk. But it seems like it's the construction. You're saying this clay thing will break because of the construction, right? Um, so why not just put, we had this, we had this in my old house, which was another historic home. Um, the, they, we had clay pipes. They just put in a new thing that ran parallel to the clay, that thing that was made of whatever they make pipes out of these days. Um, and I, I'm just wondering why it's such a big deal. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, so my question, are you talking about if they call slips leaving the sewer line where they they slid a new line down the old line? Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, they just put a new line parallel to it. They dug up my yard, that's what yeah. happened. But basically they were able to like bypass the old one. My question really is that it seems like it's construction and the cost of construction, but there's no cost associated with the tree because the tree is already old. Mm. But I, don't, I mean, I feel like some of the valuing is sort of skewed here in favor of us, the humans who want the construction versus the trees who are already there. Anyway, that's just my thought about this. And I sort of, you know, you're saying, oh, the tree has to go, the merry maple has to go, the main leader is dying and so on. But really, when does it have to go? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> I mean, that's like so true. Um, all that is very true. And, you know, we do prioritize our gray infrastructure over our green infrastructure, without a doubt. Um, it's less... Uh, it seems easier to do. There's, you know, nobody wants to lose their sewer, you know, in the middle of the night somewhere and, or have, you know, not be able to uh, have wa water or, uh, but the, um, the tree and the sewer line um, kind of cohabitate for a long period of time. Obviously the sewer line is one of the older sewer lines it's probably been there as long as the tree. Um, I don't think those trees are really that old. They're silver maples and they grow very fast. Um, and those two houses aren't that that um, young. They're pretty old houses actually. Um, but we, you know, so we have to fix the sewer line, um, which means it has to be dug up. And unfortunately the tree roots and the sewer line cohabitate in the same area. And you have to try to um, find a way to fix the sewer line without disturbing roots of the tree. And that's, that's, the, that's the big issue we run with all of our, our tree infrastructure conflicts are mostly around root zone issues. And how do you protect those root zones? Um, people, you know, ADA, there are laws that require sidewalks to be passable um, and the town is liable if they have sidewalks that are not passable um, so they have to fix those sidewalks and 
um, with the complete street sort of concept that the state is, you know, pushing for funding for municipalities to get these fundings. Um, it's worse. They have to be wider and the roads need to be wider because they also want a bike lane in the road. And so it's a cascading, um, you know, impact. And the committee is aware of this, you know, we see it all the time um, on projects. Um, I, you know, the gray infrastructure tends to take priority. The only value we give the trees is the inch per inch replacement value, you know, as far as dollar monetary value um, that we assign to it is to purchase new trees based on $90 per inch DBH. Um, so it doesn't encapsulate the whole value of the tree by any stretch of the imagination. Um, just, just how much it would cost to buy uh, trees to replace it. Um, essentially. I see Ann Tweedy on with a hand up. Can you hear Ann? I see that notification as well, but I don't. Oh, there. Hello there. Hi, Ann. How are you? <clears throat> Good. I'm just jumping on to say that we've got a very old tree that is going to be saved um, through a DCR grant at the Amherst History Museum. Yay. Yay. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and I didn't see it on the agenda, but I just wanted to say that we're so incredibly grateful. Um, that tree is, was planted in 1750. It was one of two trees, two sycamores planted on the day that um, a husband and wife moved into the house. And because our house is very, very old, the museum is, is extremely old, we were very worried about a couple of those limbs. And we had brought the fire department by for a safety check and they immediately spotted that limb and said you know you should think about cabling that with more modern cabling so um we got the grant um we're very excited and would love to find out more about how we can be involved for the arbor day and i know that's a little bit down on the agenda but um we're meeting tonight at seven so i just wanted to bring something back to our our committee Yes, um, thanks, Anne. I, so I have been working with Anne and the Amherst History Museum and Henry. Um, you know, we uh, because it's a the DCR grant is you know through the municipality. The town actually had to apply for the grant, and it's um, since the Amherst History Museum is uh, not officially a town um, town organization, uh, but uh, it's perfectly okay for the town to apply for these grants to preserve a significant you know, tree that historically has a lot to do with Amherst um, on multiple levels when you really start learning about the history of this tree. So uh, we are going to be working on, um, you know, getting a contractor to cable and prune and do some other work. The town's going to do some work. We're going to hopefully install a, um, a lightning protection system in the tree uh, so that it won't be damaged from uh, lightning strikes. Um, and then, uh, you know, hopefully we can work with the Shatra Committee and we can do an Arbor Day event. We can plant a new um, um, bride tree. There's a groom tree is, is still standing. The, the, the bride tree um, blew over in Hurricane 38. <laughs> um, this will be a second wife. Are, what's that? This will be the groom's second wife. Yes. <laughs> um, you waited a few years before, you know, getting a new having a marriage. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, where was I going with this? Yeah, so we need to you know, work together to try to promote this tree and uh, some hopefully some fundraising to go along with that to help do work on the tree down the road in the future. Um, uh, so we can ensure that the tree, you know, lives another, um, you know, couple hundred years. Thank you, Ian. 
Thank you, Anne. Um, I don't think we had gotten that news when I sent out the agenda. So I'm glad that you uh, hopped on to, to let us know. That's great. Um, Alan, do you have anything else for the tree warden report or um, further ideas since you've been working with Anne about um, how to collaborate for Arbor Day? Yeah, um, well, I think what we should do really is form a like a working group and just a couple of people. Um, we don't need to take up the committee's time uh, tonight, but um, you know, we were trying to get a, a speaker uh, Kevin Smith from the uh, Durham, New Hampshire U.S. Forest Service Research Station. Um, he gives an excellent presentation on the, you know, the physiology and of old, you know, historic trees versus young trees and how they grow differently. And um, he was a very entertaining speaker as well as very educational speaker. Um, and we're trying to get him on board and find a, a location, a venue for that to happen. Um, and uh, it's, it's, you know, the, the History Museum has their board meeting and, you know, Anne has to bring these things to the board to get permission to do things and that's where she's going tonight. Um, and uh, somehow we have to manage to pull all this together, um, you know, because <laughs> they didn't announce the grants until uh, last, uh, about a week ago, um, beginning of last week, I think it was, that they actually announced you know, we got the grant and here's the letter. Please have your town manager sign it so you can start, you know, spending funds on these grants. And so we're still waiting for the letter to come back from the town manager to get sent back to DCR so we can actually start on these. It was supposed to be approved and awarded back in January, February, um, but it kept getting delayed. So we're, we may have to do some of this in the fall or something like that um, in order to get reimbursed for our um, time and, and money we put into it. So, well, I think. Alan, could, could, I'm sorry. Could you repeat the name of that presenter that you mentioned? Um, Dr. Kevin Smith. He's out okay. of Durham, New Hampshire, Northeast U.S. Forest Service uh, Northeast Research Station. Thanks. But I can't even. I can't really. You know. Can't commit to having him here until we actually have a letter that's signed from the state um, saying go ahead. So, um. well, we we do need to figure out when we're going to schedule things like the tree tour and other Arbor Day things. Yes, um, and so that might be useful to at least get that information to Anne before we. Yeah, you know, Anne, Anne has a lot of the information about the his historic aspect of the tree and using Arbor Day. And the tree tour as kickoff to have, you know, to have that kind of that set up there. The the um, uh, I don't know what the historical term for a display is, but talk that talks about the uh, the tree and its history so that it can be begin the uh, begin telling people about the project then, essentially on Arbor Day. And I don't know if. Um... We'll get to it tonight, but um, Henry and I have planned the tree tour and that is the very first tree <laughs> to, to kick it off. And we have um, written a nice history and have some, you know, photo, historical photos to include as well. I know Anne was working on a, a display of some sort, you know, that would um, go into the whole history of that. And so coordinating those efforts. Um, yep. I don't know if you can still hear me. Oh, yes, you can. I see. <laughs> I see my grandmother's picture. Um, we have a really neat core sample of the old tree that fell over. And I think it was the 54 hurricane, actually, that knocked 54? it down. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't know that until recently. The tree came down in 58. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was the 50s. Um, and we have a lovely core sample of, of that tree as well as some other photographs, uh, more recent, and then we also have historic photographs. So we're ready. We're ready to embrace the, the tree on Arbor, Arbor Day. <laughs> and thank you very much for making it the first stop.
Um, I'm available to be part of this focus group to coordinate more for Arbor Day. Um, and hopefully we'll get to talk a little bit more about that as we get to our presentations and discussions. But if we don't, um, I'm uh, I'm still on maternity leave, so I'm very scattered, um, but I'm also usually available. Um, so we can definitely um, be in touch and coordinate. Um, it'd be great to have some of those things on display and um, that you were mentioning, because we were talking about how much fun it was and how people were so engaged where we had, um, you know, a large uh, root ball and um, a cross section of a, of a large tree, um, tree cookie. Um, so, and those were really great things to have at our booth. So uh, we can coordinate if it makes more sense to have you know, you come to to our tabling event, um, or if we just do some sort of a you know coordination so that we can uh, work work together and direct people to uh, where you, you'll be set up. Um, so, excellent. And you're tabling on the common on that day. Yes, at the farmers market. Oh, great. Okay, that's actually in May, isn't it? May farmers market, or are you doing the April farmers market? I can't remember if there was a discussion. Well, has anyone spoken to the farmers market and set a date yet? Yes, I talked to the farmer's market. Okay. And, and so I said we were going to do it like that late day in April. What was it? Like, what is it? Like 30th? I mean, yeah. but they're very flexible. They're very, like, if we want to move it, I don't think that would be a problem because they were just like, yeah, yeah, whatever you want to do, it's fine. <laughs> well, yeah, so 30th is the last Saturday. Uh, yep. Friday is Arbor Day, the 29th. Oh, we're gonna and, then, and the tree tour is a different day. To we be haven't determined. Said anything, so yeah. Okay. That's what we have to do. Okay. I may have to jump off to go to that other meeting, so I can just say, um, hold off. <laughs> Something is happening on the thirtieth at the farmers market potentially, and we're good to go. I, I just have to line up different um, volunteers on our end. Yeah, and I'll yeah. email you. Um, so if you can watch your email during that meeting, I will. Oh, I'll excellent. Send, you know, I'll send you the info. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Alan, do you have anything else um, before we move to the treasurer report? I do not. OK. Um, Julian, take it away. Um. So basically I checked with the town clerk um, as of last Friday and she said the balance is unchanged um, at 26,587.25 cents. Um, so that I believe is our current balance. And did we use some of that towards the trees we planted on uh, Saturday? So nothing has been billed out yet. I, I still need to get the letter, um, the paperwork signed by the treasurer, uh, right. releasing the funds to do the tree planting purchases. Um, and I also need, a, you know, the minutes from the meeting where you made the vote. Um, okay. Do, do you that. need to sign that in person or can <laughs> you just email? Um, you just need to sign it and, um, I can't remember, I think the chair signed it and the treasurer signed it. Yeah, come, come. Julian, if you have, if you can sign a piece of paper and take a photo and email it to me, I can Photoshop it on through your real signature. Um, you can also, if you wanna print something out and sign it in, in person um, and, and scan it or whatever, we can coordinate. But but I have, there are many ways that we can get uh, your signal signature uh, in virtually. Either works. Um, Alan, if you want to email the form to me, that works too. Whatever. Henry, does, did you send that stuff to Sarah or to Sarah? I should, it? Yeah, I should have it from when I was the treasurer. So I should oh, be able right. to, to send that to you, Julian. Forward it to me and I can sign it um, with my app. Okay, great. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right, that's it, thank you. Great, thank you. All right, next up, presentations and discussion. Um, 
First up, we have the town sidewalk projects, uh, Kellogg Ave, Mill Lane, and Amity Street. I think this is just going to be uh, kind of a quick update um, from Alan. And uh, I wanna be able to spend the majority of the time we have left talking about Arbor Day. Um, if we do have time, I, I would still like to zoom around um, in the map and uh, come up with some different ideas for our planting locations um, so that we can kind of plan ahead a little bit for our plant our second Saturday plantings this this season. Um, but Arbor Day is going to take priority in terms of scheduling. So if we don't have time to plan out um, planting locations, we can push that back to May. So um, first up, the town sidewalk projects. Um, Alan, do you have updates on those three locations? Sure. So um, Kellogg Ave, um, we started taking down the two trees that needed to come down, the, the dead snapped off stick, and then the other one that with the, the um, dead top and uh, extensive decay we took down. Um, well, we haven't taken it down yet. There's a, turns out there's a guy wire going to a Verizon pole that needs to be removed before we finish that one. But um, I think we have to grind those two stumps down. Um, the rest of those trees there, we are going to be saving, you know, we're going to be cutting out the um, asphalt sidewalks and air spading around the roots and putting down the rubberized surface so that the, um, you know, the trees don't have any impact on the roots when the sidewalks are redone. Um, they're also making the road there narrower and kind of, which is nice. So um, we'll give the trees a little breathing room on the roadside as well, because right now they're essentially growing in the road in parts of it. Um, and then um, let's see next, uh, Mill Lane. So that- Excuse me a second. A um, I was in Savannah, Georgia um, a couple of weeks ago and they have trees growing right in the road. They just, you know, move the lane over or make the road narrower and it's like these big old trees and they really care for the trees. So I, I, that's great. I just wanted to say that. Um, thank you. The, um, so Mill Lane, that project is, is um, gonna start soon. Again, there's really no tree issues there at all. Um, there will be, a, it's a potential planting location when they finish it. It has to be done by the end of June. So it may be it's something um, depending upon where construction is, it could be a second Saturday tree planting there, planting along the lane and planting at Groff Park um, might be a, one of the options. Um, and then um, Amity Street, they started out uh, this week. We started grinding a couple stumps that were in the sidewalk there. Um, again, no tree issues there. Um, they're just uh, replacing sidewalk in kind there um, and the tree roots aren't going to be impacted at all. Um, McClellan Street is was getting done, which is something that was new and that's going to be on the sidewalk list now. Um, and again, it's really the pine trees there. There's a red maple towards Lincoln Ave that I have to take down. Um, I've been putting it off for years and it's just reached a point where it needs to, it needs to go at this point. It's just too much decay in it. Um, so that's pretty much it for the sidewalk update. I know uh, somebody told me that the Taylor Street sidewalk was getting redone. I don't believe there are any trees in the way, but I heard that it was. Yeah, that correct. So Taylor is getting done um, and we are grinding stumps there as well. Um, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I talked to, I think it, it was somebody from the DPW and they explained that they were going to be doing the sidewalk in that, which is nice. All right, um, next up, Arbor Day Prep. So um, it sounds like we are good to go for Saturday the 30th at the farmer's market, which is great. Um, now that that is confirmed, I can send out a time slot um, so that everyone can sign up to for tabling hours just to make sure we have somebody there. Um, Does it start at eight? 
They start setting up at like 6.30 around there. I think it starts at seven. Starts at seven? We don't have to be there at the very beginning, but. Uh... And then it goes until one. Yeah. Yes. All right, so we could probably do two hour shifts and I'll just send, a, I'll just make a sign up sheet and then people can sign up for times that they are available. Um, it'd be great to have multiple people there just to um, be able to, to field conversations, especially during the busiest times. Um, and uh, shout out to our volunteers. Um, we would love to have you with us there. So uh, please, please stop by. Um, and if you're interested in, in tabling and just being able to talk about trees and the tree committee, um, this isn't necessarily uh, just for committee members. We're happy to have anyone who supports town trees, um, you know, participate in outreach for, for Arbor Day. So uh, if there's anybody else who's not on the meeting tonight who's interested, um, please feel free to include them. Um, in these preparations and forward the the sign up sheet so we just we can have as many people out supporting trees as possible uh logistics stuff um henry yeah go ahead i just checked the website it's 7 30 to 1 30. Oh, okay great thank you um logistics stuff we have the signs um Henry, did you find those? Do you, did you? I haven't I looked, have... I will look for it though. Okay. Yeah. The banner. Yeah, and then we also had another sign or someone was going to make one. I have the banner. Ah. It's in, it's in the car. No, I, I forgot to take it out of the car. Sorry about that. Yes, I have it and I have posts to hang up on. Great, thanks, Gordon. Um, and Ellen, you raised your hand. Were, did, were you going to make a sign for the tabling? Yep. Excellent. I'd also, um, I unfortunately will be away that weekend, so um, I'll get it to somebody before then. But I was also wondering if I'm ordering signs, um, if we should have like a lawn sign or something for when we do plantings. You know, I was thinking, you know, when cars are driving by or something, if it could be like, I don't know, another tree brought to you by or something, um, you know, just to advertise when we're on a site doing our work. I mean, of course, we reach people if they're walking by, but we might have more if we have signage we can put out while we're on site. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that'd be more effective than t-shirts, you know, because I, I mean, seriously, I, I mean, I like the t-shirts, but I think that people driving by are like, what are those people doing or who are they or okay. you know, a sign would be great. Okay. It's a great if idea. If anybody has a clever, very pithy, quick thing that <laughs> to get across who we are in a very, you know, Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee is a long, is sort of a mouthful, but <laughs> if there's something um, you think of, let me know. I'm, I'm going to have to order the signs very soon to get them by Arbor Day, though. We have a logo, which I'll send yeah. you. Uh, Shoshana sent me the logo, which is great. Okay. Okay, um, what size you want... are you to... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, there. No, no, go ahead. Well, I don't need exact dimensions, but in thinking about a pithy statement, are you talking like, is it, um, you know, is it, do you have a sense, is it like a four foot sign? Is it, you know, like, I don't, I have, I don't, don't have any mental picture of what it might be like. I, I honestly and don't yet either. either. I mean, yeah. lawn signs are, you've seen them everywhere. They're not super big. Yeah, like uh, a but, political sign. Yeah. Right, but we could yeah. do like three or four of them that could go along the road. Um, I can look into um, bigger signs. I know we have the banner. I just think um, it 
it's because it's green and we work in the summer, it's a little harder to see sometimes, or we can't really display it in a prominent way. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking something that could be, you know, sort of staked down on the ground yeah. might be good, but um, yeah, there's, there's many, you can basically do as big or small as you want, but we want it to be portable <laughs> too. Yeah, so. I thought yeah, yeah. We had rules about that also. Like, I think, I don't know if we might need to be, if at least a political signs, you know, it's like, okay, according to town, right? But yeah, that, that they, eluded they, me. They have limitations on big ones. Do you Sorry. think it would be an issue even if it's just up for the three hours that we're doing a planting and oh. then it's taken down? I think it would be fine. Okay. I don't think, yeah. Yeah, it's not, a, we're not making a permanent sign or anything. It's just something to let people know who we are and what we're doing. Um, you, okay. could, um, you could ask for permission if you wanted to leave it up longer. If it was planted in front of somebody's property, a house, you can ask them if it's okay, I'll leave it there for a week or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's generally, it's, you know, if it's assigned in a public way, um, you're supposed to get permission from the adjacent property owner to put it there. Um, okay. And if it's on, if it's a sign on a town piece of property that's next to a town building or a park or common mm -hmm. or something like that, um, you're not allowed to leave any kind of signs there. Oh, um, that's so. Mm -hmm. We did. I made these signs when we refinished the um, the sculptures of Robert Frost and Emily Dickinson because we had to remove them, and it said, "Where did Emily and Bob go?" or something. And and Paul Bachelman was really appreciative <laughs> that we put those signs there. So um, maybe it's yeah, a ask for forgiveness, not permission issue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's that's a little different. I mean, that is an art installation, so I mean, I think it's but if you're putting. Um, just the way the rules are in town around posting signs because of the controversy around many, many political signs yeah. the town has a policy that says you can't just put a sign on a piece of town property okay um, if it's for something you know um, whether it's a lawn service <laughs> or a committee or a political yeah. sign um, they just don't allow it on town okay property, so Okay, I see what you're saying. Right, that was a more informational explaining what happened, but um, promoting our, hmm. So, but, you know, promote, leaving a sign, if we're planting on the common, there's nothing wrong with putting a sign on that tree next, when you're, when we're there planting. I mean, I, I don't, I don't have, there's no issue around that. Um, we just wouldn't be able to leave it there on a park or town common or- Oh yeah, I'm not thinking of leaving anything. It's just why we're working, but. I'll look into options. I can share them via email or something. Um, mm -hmm. Figure it out, yeah. <laughs> but thanks. Um, and Ellen, while you're doing some research, uh, we can um, mobilize funds for printing out something. So um, either reimbursement or um, you can bill, we can we approve the funding so that you can bill it to our account. Um, okay, that's fine. I actually was thinking of doing this um, as a donation to the group. So um, oh. I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Save the money for the trees. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ellen, I think I remember you saying that like the estate of Dr. Seuss was like really stingy about letting out their intellectual property. But do you think there's any way we could like get the Lorax involved and you know, <laughs> like a little sign that says like Lorax at work with like a little Lorax with like a little shovel in his hands or something. Oh, God, I talk too much. I shouldn't be saying things like that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I do think that will be problematic. Yeah, I'm afraid. It's a cute idea, though. But um, just because of my job, I wouldn't want to be the one who actually made that sign. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, good idea. But I, I don't think that we should, they'll want lots of copyright and legal papers and yeah. Um, Shoshana, do you, are you going to have the uh, display rack ready by then? Yeah, it's already done. Oh, wow. And I can't, 
I can bring the canopy and a table. Great. Okay. Thanks, Henry. That's excellent. Um, Alan, do we have tiny trees to give away? We are. We're going to have tiny trees, uh, lots of them. Uh, we have um, we have oak and um, I think I, it was oak and bald cypress. Okay, great. Um, do we have any other um, tree related things for people to interact with? Um, we can coordinate further with Anne um, about the historic um, society tree stuff, whatever she might have. Um, and that could be a way to kind of advertise for the tree tour. Um, if we have a, a date picked out for that, we could it could be a way to advertise and get people to come for a tree tour. Um, but uh, do you have anything else like the big tree cookie or um, those sort of interactive things? Or is there a place we should contact in town or something like that where we could get some more of those kind of interactive materials? Because those are a big hit. And I think that's a great way to get people interested in what we're doing and also to to let them see from a distance what we are like right when they're browsing around at the farmers market you you want to be able to see from the crowd in the middle what each booth is like oh i'm going to go over there because they have cupcakes or whatever it is if we have like obvious tree stuff as well as our um sign that i think that's a great way to get people to come over to talk to us more yeah i can definitely you know we definitely will have another big large wood round to to put there and i can look for some uh examples of poor root systems and you know from newly planted trees and hopefully have a few trees and pots and things like that um uh, so i can kind of come up with some active interactive uh things i remember last, when year, we we, last year we had a really good turnout because of um our facebook push that we had there's a lot of people that like came directly because of their go, oh, you have free trees. And so I want to do that again this year. Great. We should um, coordinate it with the Instagram and and probably do something on both. Um, that's an excellent idea. Yeah, Absolutely. I like that. It, is there um, last I remember when we when I manned the booth last year, people were really into the is the tree cookie and when you say that is that the cross section of the tree that has all the okay so people are really into that tree cookie as i recall um and i've been thinking and so it's great that we'll have that again and i've been trying to think of like is there something that we could make it like you know in the same way of like guess how many jelly beans are in this jar type of thing you know is there something we could do with that cookie where you know people could only get so close i don't, I don't know how you do it but like i would like for people to guess how many rings are on that tree and then give them something like and then if you win something happens the only thing i could think of and this is probably way off base is if you win you get to tell us where to plant one of our public shade trees um you know with lots of rules and regulations about you know we can't plant in certain places and it has to be public blah, blah. that's the which is not you know it's probably not something we would want to commit to but um we, i mentioned it yeah go ahead we can give out um apples or tree fruit or nuts you know we spend a little bit yeah. of money on that i'd be happy to contribute something yeah yep yeah 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 that way we could have multiple winners with that like whenever anyone answers it correctly although that requires someone to actually count out the rings beforehand like, so that we, we know the that. actual answer That's an easy, i can do that put me down for <laughs> counting the tree rings it makes me so <laughs> dizzy trying to do that <laughs> That's a fun idea though, a little contest or would it make sense, maybe not, but um, to enter the contest, you have to give us your email or something so we can have more people to yeah, you know, sure. build up our that's email a, list or- That's a legitimate or, tactic that gets used quite a bit. <laughs> so it's not unexpected. Would it be Great. possible to plant a tree like you win a tree like bennett you were saying where to plant a tree but like we could plant one 
for them. I know we used to plant on private property. Could we give them a bigger tree and the consolation prize for people who don't get it right is one of our tiny free tree sticks to go plant <laughs> at your own house? I mean, personally, that would, I'm on the tree committee, so that would make me really excited. <laughs> If I was getting access to a free tree being planted wherever I wanted to plant it, that'd be cool. Um, let me think about some, like, um, let me think, on, uh, this is an unformed thought, so let me think about some other, including that, some more options that would be easily done. Um, giveaway, you know, an instant giveaway is the, the thing about, you know, Henry's idea is that you win and then you get something that day and you take it home that day and there's instant gratification. So. Um, which is good. So um, maybe there's some other tree products or things that we could add to sweeten the mix. Great. Um, I say that with one eye on the clock. I know you've got some other things you want to get through. So yeah. Um, the Arbor Day Proclamation. So um, as Henry brought up, we, there's the um, focus group meeting tomorrow um, to put together the Arbor Day proclamation. And uh, we also can, uh, we're planning to send in whatever we want to say. Um, I think Amber is gonna post it. Alan is what we talked about previously. Um, do you have, do we, have what we said last year? <laughs> yes, so um, I sent them, I sent Angela an email saying, let's use last year's proclamation, just change the dates. Um, and since the town, the subcommittee on town council is, is doing the proclamation, I'm assuming she did that. <laughs> I didn't receive a response that she was doing that um, or had done it. Um, so I'm glad to hear that. Um, so yeah, so they'll read the basic proclamation and what we need is to have someone there to, you know, say thank you and we hope you join us at Arbor Day. We hope you join us um, on, at the farmer's market and participate in this great tree tour and put a plug in for the, um, the big sycamore at the Amherst History Museum project. Um, so, yeah, talk about the seedlings. Okay, I can do that. It's a good time to plug the second Saturday volunteer time for tree planting. Okay. Um, we also talked previously about bringing up the Mary Maple. Um, I think we should have some plan. I know that there are people who will bring that up when we're um, tabling for Arbor Day. And so we, we, we had talked about doing more of an outreach and giving people the space to talk about the Merry Maple and celebrate the Merry Maple. Um, we've previously said we don't want to take too strong of a stance, right? We don't want to end up having a, you know, an argument. It's not that we're trying to save the Merry Maple or condemn the Merry Maple. It's more about providing space for people to celebrate it. And then when it's time for the tree, the town to take it down, people will have had the chance to come to terms and and that sort of thing. So, so what I'm thinking about for Arbor Day is being able to point people towards an event or social media where we're having discussions about it, not necessarily the argument of, are we saving it or, or not, right? It's more about talking about it and pointing people towards other resources. Um, Well, are there any, you know, I've, I've got a circulated a draft op-ed, which is 
you know, just a work in progress um, about the Merry Maple. Um, it would be nice at the end of that, because I started to write it into it, you know, like maybe I did write it in the end of the draft, like stay tuned for, you know, um, more events, public forums, things like that. And I just don't, as far as I know, those things aren't planned um, uh, yet. And I don't know if any of those, I don't know if there's any plans underway for that sort of thing. So, um, I, 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 make, that was as far as I could take it. Would it make sense for the uh, to have printouts of the iPad there and have like some uh, on the email sign up sheet for the checkbox for Mary Maple News or something like that? For those that are particularly interested. Well, the way to get Mary Maple News is to sign up for our newsletter, right? Mm. I mean, just making that up, but right. it does seem like that yeah. seems like the place to do that. Yeah, I'd be hesitant to um, to do things where, I mean, Alan's going to have to decide at some point that this tree is dangerous and needs to come down. Um, so it's good that we're letting people know, but I would be careful about starting a conversation where people think they might be having an effect. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I um, I like the idea of you know trying to just keep it. To what Mary Maple means to people, or some not even what it means, just just writing a note or a sentence or a word. Um, maybe there's a way, you know. I don't know. You now I'm thinking of like a time capsule. Maybe there's a virtual time capsule, you know, where people could, you know, send us either a, could either write there, write down something on a piece of paper, and it's going to get posted on. You know, the website, the community website, or one of our social media things, um, what the tree, the words that describe the tree to that person. Maybe we could do a time capsule kind of thing where, you know, if the tree, you know, is removed, I'm not saying it's definitely going to get removed, but if there's a tree hearing and, and the town decides to cut it down, then, you know, could we put a time capsule in somewhere? You know that we, you know, uh, once we figure out how old the tree is, <laughs> if it gets cut down, um, then uh, you know we could theory say it's going to be opened up in another eighty years to see what people think. You know, I don't know. Um, I'm sure there's probably some kind of social media equivalent of a time capsule someone has invented somewhere, <laughs> where instead it would be a digital thing instead of a physical thing to, to um, get people's thoughts on what the tree means. Or maybe you, it could be a document that gets kept in special collections at the Jones. Yeah, exactly. Or the Amherst History Museum. Yeah. We could plant a new tree and bury the time capsule under that tree an undetermined amount of time, but mm -hmm. someday that tree will die, it'll fall over, create a hole in the ground, and the time capsule will appear. Yeah. Is there a timeline, Alan? Did we're we trying to do something? I have like the date of June in my mind. Is there a deadline mm -hmm. in June, mm -hmm. something about the Merry Maple that has to be done before then? So I was told back in February, not to hold a tree hearing in March, <laughs> um, and that it would probably wouldn't be till June. It was just an estimate time where they might begin that conversation. Um, so June is is sort of the you know in May I'm going to need to check in um, to see how people want to proceed. You know, are they actually starting the project this <laughs> this summer? Um, or are we, is the project getting delayed till fall, you know, kind of thing, or next year? <laughs> so we'll have to check in in June on that. Alan, is that the, the North Common project you? Yeah, yes, the North Common project. So Bennett, like you were saying, I think it'd be nice if we did have an, 
event we could point people towards um, and that would alleviate us having to have too many difficult conversations. I, I know it's just a, a, pas a passionate topic for a lot of people. And if we could say, you know, we're gonna talk more about, celebrate the Merry Maple and talk more about that at this time and place, then we, we can kind of direct people where they can best spend their efforts. Um, I don't know if that's something we're ready to plan right now. I think waiting till Alan, you said um, checking in in May and then June will know more. Um, but we also don't wanna wait too long because we want people to be able to express themselves. So I like the idea of having people be able to like write messages what you know what they want to say about the Mary Maple and maybe some one of the um, social media posts we could start in May would be like a Mary Maple minute where every whatever it is Friday we can post something that someone's written about the tree what the tree means to them something like that so I do feel like we're getting ahead Personally, I feel like we're getting ahead of ourselves because we don't really know, like right now there's no tree hearing scheduled. Um, there's, if you start making commemorations to the memory of the Mary Maple, it sounds like it's a done deal and we're gonna take the tree down. And there's actually no, I mean, it's it's one possibility. It's not the only possibility. And that, that might be alarm, might be, may be more alarming to people. Um, if, I, if I were manning a table right now um, and somebody said, hey, what's going on with the Mary Maple? I think we should be able to say, well, here's some, you know, here's some different things that are being discussed, but nothing is, you know, we want to be prepared for that conversation. And then I would, I really would, all joking aside, would say, you know, there, there will certainly be more about the Mary Maple coming up in the coming months. Um, nothing is scheduled yet. You should sign up for our newsletter. Um, and that's where, you know, to the extent that the tree committee is involved with anything Mary Maple related, that's where you will find that. Um, and that's a way to, you know, like it, it gets signups for a newsletter, which is not really the main point, but nice. But, and it's also, it is an action that is true um, in, in lieu of any more concrete information. So that would be my, that's my gut instinct. Um, I think all the ideas are great. I just think they're, I don't, I don't, I don't get, I don't get the sense that we're there yet. So. That's a great point. Um directing them to our newsletter and maybe our May and June meetings if they want to be more actively yeah. involved. Um, great. That sounds great to me too. I just was wondering, is it, is it worth something that, is it worth, is this something that would be worth discussing with the history to, uh, people more? Because it is sort of a, the history of trees in town is kind of a historical topic and this would be, I don't know, maybe they'd have some ideas. Just a thought. Yeah, um, I think that's something we could bring up with Anne. Um, certainly, if they have any um, historic photos or anything like that, I think that would be a really cool thing to to find. Um, whatever happens to the Mary Maple. Um, so when we when we meet with her about um, the history museum tree, uh, we should have have that in mind and be able to, to mention the Mary Maple as well. Mary Maple is on the tree tour. And um, I did uh, ask at the um, Jones Library, the special collections, they did not have really any historic photos. So um, in their collection, but perhaps the, the History Museum does. Great. Um, So aside from signing up for tabling, are we ready for Arbor Day? Are there any loose ends to tie up that I'm forgetting? Um, the only thing I would add it's, um, is we should schedule the tree tour, uh, the initial tree tour. And I'm um, wondering if we should do it on the 29th, which is Arbor Day. We could do a Friday evening tour or something like that. If that makes sense. 
makes sense to me. Ellen, are you available that day or I you're away that whole weekend, right? Yeah, unfortunately I'm away that whole weekend, yeah. but don't let that stop if, if you feel that's a good time. Um, one thing is you could also advertise the tree tour at Arbor Day and get people to sign up for something for it. So it could go both ways, I suppose. Yeah, I was thinking that we were gonna talk about the tree tour while we were tabling and if you have it on actual arbor day you know we're not going to be tabling until the day after right so the timing yeah so we could do it after it'd be nice to have some yeah, event but on it arbor does day. make sense to have it on arbor day too you might actually get like some you know hardcore arbor day <laughs> celebrators that i think you can do, do it multiple i mean it doesn't <laughs> have to be a one and done deal we could have two or three offerings um you know this season so and eventually know. it'll be self-guided but for right. now we'll, we'll be leading it the, the weekend after arbor day is um well mother's day is the sunday but that might be a nice time to do something either on sunday which is mother's day or saturday i feel like that could be a nice well we have tree planting on the day before mother's day so maybe mother's day is the day i'm available mother that would be a nice thing that like people would want to bring their mothers to go do i think so <laughs> yeah look at trees <laughs> total it yeah it's definitely got like a mother's day feel to it um and then you could get like hook people in because there's probably a lot of people that go out for brunch it's like a big like go out to dinner day they go out to brunch and then they go to the tree tour it's like a perfect day Well, we have to make a decision on one day, so yeah. <laughs> well, that, that sounds good in terms of our advertising it on Arbor Day, I mean, on the Saturday. Would we want to have a rain date or you go rain or shine? That's the only reason why sometimes it's good to get people to sign up, even if it's free just in case you have to communicate something with people, but um, I mean, it's not, it's not necessary, but if there's torrential rain that day. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'd say if it's torrential rain, no one's gonna show up, but if it's just like a light mist, you'll get people showing up still a bit. It could snow also, but um, <laughs> why don't we just schedule for that day? And then if it rains, we can, you know, We'll see, but let's just try to just do it. So it's scheduled for May 8th. Or May 15th is Mother's Day. Is it? Oh, Mother's Day is the 8th. I'm sorry. So the tree planting is not till the following Saturday. Yeah, so Mother's Day, that's fine. May 8th. And what time would we want to do it? Would an early afternoon? make sense one or two o'clock maybe two o'clock two o'clock okay and you're back by then ellen oh yeah i'm just away that one weekend unfortunately okay. it just worked out that way all right and where's the the meeting point where you know if we have people sign up for this the meeting location for the tree tour to be next to the library you know in front of the historical society that's where the first tree is the yes, first two trees are there actually sense. yeah and i'll i'll lead the tour um and alan if you're there and ellen certainly you know pipe in whatever but uh All right. All right. So it's on Mother's Day, the eighth at two o'clock. Yes. All right. I want to like you know advertise this on social media too. Okay. And um, maybe um in Nextdoor, the Nextdoor app. I usually put stuff for us in the Nextdoor app as well when I do things. Great. Okay. Um, and then the last Arbor Day 
thing is we talked about printing more of our handouts. Um, Do we yeah, have someone to... said that they had an actual printer and they could do it at home, right? Like, is am I remembering that right? Rather than getting them printed? I do not. Okay. Which pieces do we have that we're printing? So we have some stuff from last year. Yeah, that brochure that I made with Nani, we've got that. And I, I don't know what of those we have printed left over. I, that, I think that was the thing we were going to have printed, right, Shoshana? Yeah. Okay. Do you have the extra material, Henry? I have a bag of stuff. I'll go through and see what there is. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it would be good to print more of those brochures just in case. Um, we can have them printed. Yeah. All right, so who has the original? Um, it's in our Google Drive. I can get them printed. Great. How many copies should we do? I think last time we did 100. 100? Well, I'll see how many I have, but yeah. OK, Henry, I'll, I'll coordinate with you. Um, if we have, it looks like we have a lot left over, I'll amend it. But otherwise, I'll plan on 100. OK. Arbor Day It's not in my drive, at least, so. All right, it's past seven. Um, I don't want to keep everyone too much longer and it is baby bedtime at my house. Um, <laughs> So I am fine with uh, tabling um, the second Saturday plantings for May, and we will have our May meeting before our May planting, I believe. I can, um, I'll just say that I believe that the May planting is going to be um, on uh, Country Corners Road. Down looking, there. Yeah, it's looking very, possible that would be where it is okay so we can plan on that um stay tuned for updates but that's a, a good assumption i think um, and then uh for our may meeting uh we can plan out ahead so that we have everything um kind of lined up for the rest of the season okay. um and then I guess one last thing before we wrap up, um, the open letter that got sent out, um, but did we, we wanted to follow up with the op-ed for um, the budget line support. Did that get sent in to the paper? Well, Ben, it's not here now. Okay. Um. The only letter I saw was the um, the recent letter, which is about the Mary Maple, right? He did one. He did another one. Um, yeah. Yeah, we we edited it, and I've signed it and everything. Yeah, um, I did too. Oh, that was signed. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I signed on to that. It looked amazing. Um, so I'll just coordinate with um. Bennett, um, but I don't, I've never sent in an op-ed before. So if anybody um, wants to send this letter in, I believe we're ready to go. Okay. Are, are you talking um, about the, the most recent thing from Bennett or the prior one? The prior uh, one. Prior, prior one. one. We all signed that, so I can, um, 
I can submit it to the, uh, you submit it electronically. It's pretty easy. I'll do that. Okay. I have a, a final version, Henry. I'm not sure if the, the last one was the, the final I one, but on Google drive. So, um, Oh, right. You should have the link. Yeah. And it's got, uh, your signature and yeah, some other, we're all sort of listed there. So yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. Great. I will send that in. Okay. Um, so we are just about ready to wrap up here. Um, I'm looking forward to our Arbor Day event. That's going to be fun. Um, does anyone have any closing remarks before we sign off? All right. Well, thanks for coming. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to the the Arbor Day event and uh, and more plantings this season. So that was really fun to get out. So thanks, everyone. As long as we don't get COVID. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tested today. It was okay. So hopefully we're all okay. I tested negative yesterday. Okay. <laughs> I think we were outside. We we're okay. Yeah. All right. Be well, Bye. everybody. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.